So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio and my YouTube channel. And uh, I'm super excited to be joined all the way from America by the fantastic Sean Kanan. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Now, obviously, life at the moment is completely turned up on its head for a lot of people. I mean, here in the UK, we're in a third lockdown. We have kind of got an end in sight, which is quite, uh, quite good. But what's it like for you guys in America? How are things for you? So I don't know how your political system is structured in the sense that um, here in the United States, uh, things vary from state to state. So uh, in California, we have gone back and forth. We have gone from, you know, being really locked down to just this past Friday, I believe, uh, restaurants are now open again, limited seating, you know, and it, 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 it tends to change with, you know, they look at what's going on in the hospitals and people going in. And I, I think obviously, you know, people getting vaccinated now is having an effect on it, a positive effect, which is great. So all things considered other than, you know, wearing masks everywhere and the distancing, it's, it's not horrendous, uh, especially now given that, uh, you know, a lot of businesses are opening up, but it is, it's, it's oscillated. It's gone from being much more restrictive to uh, like it is now, which is relatively, relatively normal. I mean, did it affect you much in terms of work? I mean, I know at one point in, you know, across the world, everything practically shut down. So did it affect you with any jobs you were on? It did affect me. Um, I have a show right now, which is uh, an Emmy award winning show on Amazon Prime called Studio City. It's not available yet in the UK, but we are working to remedy that. Um, and we, you know, we made the conscious decision that we were gonna go and we were gonna shoot more episodes. And in order to do that, there were all sorts of uh, restrictions uh, put in place by the Screen Actors Guild, which governs production. Uh, and we had to adhere to them, but we were able to get five new episodes up. And it was, um, uh, it was a Herculean task to work around the obstacles. Um, at one point, almost all production ceased. You know, now production is happening. Uh, although there are significant um, uh, protocols put in place. Uh, I'm actually leaving to start a film uh, this weekend. Uh, so there, there is work. Um, you know, one of the things that I did was finish my, my new book, which is called Way of the Cobra. And in the book, I talk about the necessity for not just surviving during the pandemic, but thriving during the pandemic. And I, I, I realize that's easier said than done especially for some people over others, but I, I really made the conscious effort that I was going to do my best not to allow the external circumstances to dictate, you know, what I chose to do internally. So, I, you know, actually I've been really productive and, and, and busy over the last year. And one of the things that is so important is, of course, looking after yourself. Mental health is so important. So, I mean, I imagine when you're able to get out and do things and, and you know, work, it must be such a godsend that you're able to, to continue. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I think so many of us who are in a position of being fortunate to love what we do, when, when you're not able to do it, it really does take a mental toll. You know, I can only imagine what the sociological long-term effects are going to be on kids that have had to, uh, you know, do remote schooling. I mean, you know, there's going to be a, a tremendous gap in their socialization that we're probably not even going to realize until they start maturing into young adults. Uh, you know, who, who knows what the long-term effects of this uh, is going to be, long-term effects are going to be. And, and, you know, I think also that, um, look, I'm really lucky. I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I'm was quarantined with my wife who I love and we get along great. I can, can you imagine, I mean, I joke about it, but can you imagine a couple that knows they're heading for divorce and they found themselves, uh, I think it'd be a great premise for a movie, right? But they find themselves, you know, uh, sequestered together and either they probably killed each other or they may, maybe they work it out. Right. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been difficult for everybody, obviously. 
I mean, here in the UK, we're getting to the point where as of Monday, some kids are going to start going back to school. So it is kind of the light at the end of the tunnel. We've been given here in the UK the day of the 21st of June is when we're hoping to have all restrictions lifted. Obviously, that's a long way off yet. Um, But, you know, I mean, the vaccine program, we've had uh, over 20 million people here in the UK have now had their first vaccine. So it's, it's positive steps. We're heading in the right direction. I think so, too. I mean, I think so, too. Uh, and, and, you know, it can't happen soon enough because we are going to find out that I think a lot of the preventative measures taken have had some very serious deleterious effects on people. Everything from, you know, skyrocketed substance abuse to um, domestic violence. I mean, all sorts of stuff. So it can't happen soon enough as far as I'm concerned. So tell us a bit about your, your new project. So you say it's hopefully coming out here in the UK at some point in the future, but tell us a bit about, bit about it. How did it come about? What's it about? So, so the show is called Studio City, and it's an Emmy award-winning digital drama exclusively on Amazon Prime. It's been a dream of mine for a very, very long time. You know, they say write, write what you know. And so it's a show about an aging soap star, and it's a show within a show. Uh, he's a guy uh, that you think when you first see him has the world by the tail, and you very quickly learn as the layers of the onion are peeled away that he has many, many faults and many problems that we all deal with. Um, at the end of the pilot episode, somebody shows up that he never knew existed and it turns his complete life upside down. Uh, it's, it's funny. It's, it's, it's sad. It's poignant. And, uh, I, I really am excited to, uh, to, uh, get it distributed worldwide. And when you get a project like that, that you can obviously work on, and I mean, it must be a godsend to know that, you know, you, you, you get to work on such a great show. So, I mean, for you, when the, the, the premise first came about, what, what, was your, what was your initial reaction to it? Well, I, I created the show, so that, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the premise was mine. So, uh, you know, it's, it's always a struggle getting anything made in the entertainment business. And when it finally... Uh, came to fruition. It was beyond exhilarating. Um, my wife is one of the uh, members of the production and writing team, so I get to work with her. Uh, I've got a lot of really good friends who are involved with it, so it's 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 a fantastic experience all the way around. Now, obviously, a lot of people will remember you from The Bold and the Beautiful, which you were, I couldn't believe it. You were there for about 17 years on and off, so for you, uh, that was obviously yeah. a big part of your life. I would come, I would go. I actually played the same character, Deacon Sharp, on The Young and the Restless. Uh, so, yeah, Deacon has been, uh, uh, you know, he's been a big part of my, my career and my life. And he was such an interesting character because, obviously, he was one of these characters that he was such a bad bloke, but he always seemed to land on his feet. He always seemed to kind of have the luck uh, on his side. You know, he, he, he started off being a really horrendous bad person, and as things went on... Um, you know, he emerged as being more of kind of like an anti-hero, uh, you know, somebody that operates emotionally in those shades of gray that I think make people interesting. You know, very few people are black and white. Uh, there are people that are horrible people that do good things and people that are good that sometimes do horrible things. And I've always found those nano shades of gray to be the interesting uh, areas to try and uh, play in, in, in a character. And I mean, as, uh, as well with, with Deacon, he obviously, um, you know, had many, many love interests, of course, um, being with Brooke, with Quinn, which was quite an interesting pairing. And I did love that pairing. So, to, I mean, to work with these amazing um, actors must have been just so much fun. Well, it's, it's, it's wonderful. You know, we've got some incredibly talented actresses on the show. Um, they, they, they ain't bad to look at either. And, uh, <laughs> It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, like I said, uh, it, it was an honor to be a part of the show. It's the most syndicated show in television history. Uh, it's in dozens and dozens of countries. And, uh, you know, it's just really flattering to to go somewhere that I've maybe never been, a country I've never been in, and have somebody in a foreign language come up and recognize me as, as Deacon. It's funny, a lot of times they expect me to speak their language, you know, and you know, I don't speak fluent Afghani, but, you know. And I mean, of course, uh, we saw him leave the show when he uh, obviously tried to kill Quinn. So for you to kind of end that way, do you think you would ever go back or do you think that's kind of 
the end of, of, of Deacon for the time being? I hope it's not the end. I mean, it's a character that I really, uh, I, I love playing. Um, right now, Deacon has been languishing in uh, prison. Uh, and, you know, it, it, they know how to find me. And if I were to ever get the call to possibly come back, and if I was available to do it, and it was the right uh, series of, you know, the right situation, I would absolutely be open to it. Uh, but in, in the meantime, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to, uh, you know, keep working and doing other exciting things. Now, you were telling me just before we came on air that you're actually planning to come to the UK and visit Liverpool. So tell us a bit about this. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Uh, uh, an organization called Monopoly Events is going to be bringing me over to the uh, Liverpool Comic Con. And I'll tell you, I've got so many uh, people from the UK that have been so wonderful and so supportive to me. Uh, I, I, I speak to a lot of them through social on a regular basis, and it's going to give me the opportunity to you know, shake their hands and say uh, hello and, and meet them in person. And so I'm, I'm really excited to come. I, um, I've been to the UK before, but I was hosting the Miss World pageant at the Royal Albert Hall. And I, I was working so much, I only got to go out one night and see a very, very little bit of London. So I'm really looking forward to coming back and uh, getting to explore your great country. And that must be also the other great thing with, you know, the amazing thing with social media is that you can interact with the fans, you kind of get that instant reaction. So, I mean, what's your, you know, kind of, um, sort of, what have you found from social media from the fans? Well, I mean, look, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, the internet and social media has made the world a much smaller place. Uh, and it's allowed people to um, get to know each other based on specific interests. Um, it's it's just amazing to me, for instance, with you know uh, the Karate Kid Cobra Kai universe that a, a role that I did over three decades ago still has relevance and interest from fans, and uh, and it's just it's very flattering. Um, you know, I've, I've done lots and lots of other things in my career, but that's one of the the bigger things that I'm known for, and um, you know, it's just it's just wonderful that uh, people still have an interest in it. It's become I guess, cross-generational, that there's, you know, a whole new crop of, of kids now that are uh, being exposed to the Karate Kid films. A lot of them, I imagine, through Cobra Kai first and then going back and, and watching the films afterwards. But uh, it, it's been exciting and fun. I mean, what would you say has been your proudest moment in your, your career? I mean, is there a project that just stands up above the rest or...? I'd have to say Studio City is definitely one of them. Uh, you know, this is, like I said, it's a show that I've created. I'm the executive producer. I, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm one of the lead actors. And it's something that I've tried to get made for a very long time. And through, uh, you know, the hard work of my wife and our showrunner, Timothy Woodward Jr. and a lot of other people, it, it you know, it was realized. And to walk on set and you know be speaking lines that initially were only in your head is it's it's an amazing feeling and i mean when you're in charge of it all i mean i imagine that when you're doing the the project it must be quite a strange feeling because you obviously you know you you know exactly how you want it to be said and you want it to appear but at the same time there's all that pressure that that this is riding on me sort of thing well i know listen this is very much a team effort and 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 you know i am not the, uh, you know, the first and last word on all of it. Um, we, we have a, you know, we have a production team um, and uh, it, it, it's kind of like the best idea wins. It's that sort of what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I like pressure. I, I, I'm one of those people that tends to thrive when my back's against the wall. Um, so for me, it brings out the best in me. Um, other people work differently. But, you know, I, I'm very fortunate in that I've got, like I said, my wife and good friends that are all part of the team. And I know that they're all there to support the project and, and, and me. And uh, it takes a lot of the pressure off of me. Now, I just want to say it's been a pleasure talking to you. But before we go, have you got any messages you'd like to give to anyone who is listening in hospital or anyone who's watching this online? <sighs> Yeah, I, I do. It's, it's that, look, we are all going to get through this. And, um, you know, this has been difficult for everybody. Uh, if, you're, if you're in hospital, I, I pray for a speedy recovery uh, and that you can get back to your friends and family soon and just, you know, do your best to dig down deep and, 
and uh, as, as, as the English say, stiff upper lip. Uh, you know, I'm wishing everyone the best, and uh, I look forward to uh, coming to England uh, in November and, and saying hello to all the wonderful people uh, in the UK, and I want to wish everybody the best. Thank you so much, Sean. It's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, keep safe. Thank you again for your time, and hopefully we'll speak again one day. You too, my friend. Please take care of yourself. All the best to you.